about that, I found this artistic to dis dis vision wise, but educational and most important, I thought this was very important. It was very important that you did this project. The fact is so. Okay. And can it be reissued, even if it comes out four or five years oh, from now? Oh, yes, there's a possibility. But in the meantime, and as we see happening so much, it's the world of DVDs. Mm -hmm. yes. And the DVD is available, and there's material and other books written about Wilberforce. And one of the things that I can add, too, that how did, what did you feel about the ending? How did the ending work? Excellent. Okay. Philip Anschutz is the wonderful Christian businessman and entrepreneur who made this possible. Philip Anschutz is a strong Christian, and he fights these battles all the time in the business world. Philip Anschutz has many, many companies, among them Regal Cinemas. In fact, he owns a fourth of all the screens in the country. And you say, well, if he, that, that's the case, why can't he put his own pictures in? And it doesn't work that way. They are booked by companies so far in advance you don't just walk in and take other pictures off the screen and put yours in. It doesn't work that way. It has to be very orderly in advance. But Phil Anschutz is the man who wanted this done. When I first met with him, he asked me, he said, Ken, uh, uh, you've done good things. He liked Christie. He was a big fan of the television series Christie. That took me 19 years and down to my last penny to get that done for television. Mm -hmm. 19 years. The good stuff, I, I guess I'm just slow. Oh. <laughs> but I believe in the good stuff. And in any event, Phil Vanchez met with me and says, what do you want to do? And I mentioned Sea of Glory, the story of the four chaplains in World War II, the priest, the rabbi, and Protestant minister, and the Catholic priest, uh, and two Protestant ministers, Catholic priest and rabbi, who give up their life jackets to the last four men. That's a story I still want to do. And we talked about the different things. And he said, what else? I said, well, the story of John Newton. He said, why would you want to do John Newton? I said, because he wrote Amazing Grace, which is the most well-known song in the world. More people sing Amazing Grace by far than anything else. They sing it at weddings, funerals, sing it in the bathtub, shower. I mean, Amazing Grace is everywhere. And I said, that really is significant to me. And if you talk about marketing, I like to do things where you have a head start. <laughs> Christie was a popular book. had been read by 48 million people, 8 million copies sold. Do things where you have a head start. So uh, in doing that, I like to think about it. And remind me, before, before I wind up, I'll tell you what the next project is. I think you'll go, oh my gosh. So in any event, Phil said, you want to do uh, the story of John Newton? I said, yes. He said, why? It's an amazing grace, a popular song. It would be a, be a big hit. He said, I agree. But have you ever heard of William Wilberforce? And I said, yes, I know of him. And I know that he was uh, influenced by John Newton, as we see him visiting Wilberforce with Wilberforce. And he said, well, that's the story I want to tell. I said, well, fine, Phil, but we'll do John Newton first, and then we'll move into Wilberforce. He said, Ken, you didn't hear me. I want to do William Wilberforce, and I thought I'd better shut up. I'm talking myself right out of a film. And we laughed about it. And he said, I want to do Wilberforce also because of his second great obsession. His first was the endless late trip. But his second, we didn't get to do, and I still would like to do it. Wilberforce's second great obsession is perhaps even more important today. Do you remember what it was? To have a reform of manners, morals, decency, and a return to civility.